varicose veins are very common and often you inherit them from your parents or your grandparents. So there's a tendency of the walls of the veins that take blood back up to the heart from the feet to dilate. And one of the reasons this happens is because the valves, which are a series of non-return swing doors that close when you stand up to counteract the effect of gravity, fail. So they don't close properly. And that means that the veins that are visible in your leg become dilated, unsightly, and more importantly, can cause problems with pain, aching, heaviness, and also the skin at the level of the ankle, which is the bit of you that's exposed to most of the effect of the head of pressure, becomes unhealthy, which means that you can find your skin becoming dry, uh, eczematous and itchy. So continuing the same theme, uh, there are lots of people with varicose veins that don't cause any symptoms. Um, however, the small group of patients who become more troubled with the unhealthiness of the skin, as I described before, um, will potentially develop ulcerations of the ankle. So an ulcer is simply a breakdown in the skin. It's one of the most common causes of a leg ulcer um, outside of diabetes and uh, arterial disease and will need to be treated uh, in order to be able to um, get rid of them. Um, and that requires either conservative medical management where the veins are removed without removing them, i.e. wearing a compression stocking or getting rid of the varicose veins that contain failed valves. As I alluded to before, um, there's a non-operative approach, which is simply to wear class two graduated compression stockings to the level of below the knee. Um, this is all well and good for a short period of time, but obviously in hot weather, or if you um, have um, problems with arthritis of your hands, for instance, getting these stockings on and off every day, morning and night can be really difficult. So the best way, um, if you are fit enough to undergo the procedure is to have the veins um, removed. Traditionally, um, so for the first 15 years of my medical career, we would strip veins out. Uh, and you may have heard of your grandparents talking about that um, or even, even your parents. But nowadays, rather than stripping the vein, we get rid of the veins by causing the walls to, to stick together. So rather than the blood being able to fall back down with gravity, um, we can actually heat up the inside of the vein, either using a laser or a um, radio frequency device, which gets hot. And by causing a thermal injury of the wall of the veins, we then um, cause them to stick together by applying a stocking for five to seven days after the treatment. And then hopefully they stay stuck together. So although you haven't removed the veins, from a functional point of view, they're no longer working, exposing the skin at the ankle to the uh, unhealthy head of pressure caused by the failed valves. So the other, other um, vascular procedures I do tend to be um, open operations. So vascular surgery is grossly divided into minimally invasive or endoscopic surgery. Uh, and these have evolved as a result of using uh, stenting technology. I, however, am an open vascular surgeon, so I will either um, undertake um, open abdominal surgery, so aortic aneurysm surgery, carotid surgery, uh, and lower limb bypass surgery for people who have problems with the blood supply to their feet. Um, a secondary area is um, to support other surgeons in other specialties who are doing operations which are close to or nearby vascular structures, large veins or large arteries for which they need vascular support in case there's a problem with either bleeding or clotting. I am lucky enough to have been trained at a time when uh, general surgery was a true general surgical specialty. So my FRCS qualification is in 
uh, general and vascular surgery. However, um, I've also been lucky enough to train as a transplant surgeon, so as well as doing kidney transplants, so live donor, nephrectomy and putting those kidneys into a recipient, um, I do dialysis surgeries, so creating fistulas for dialysis as well as placing peritoneal dialysis catheters. And in the world of general surgery, so in my NHS practice, I look after the general surgical population um, who have renal failure. So that includes looking after people with hernias, so inguinal hernias, abdominal wall hernias, incisional hernias, uh, as well as lumps and bumps of the skin.